Hello everyone, happy Sunday. Zach's back on a Sunday. You know what that means. History by mail for October. This is part two of the... Oh God, what was it? I think it was called the uh, transferring of power we did last time. It was... um la Last month it was Washington's farewell address. And this month we are going to get into it and we are going to take a look. Let's see if we can determine it's a letter... Uh, something of December, I don't know, I don't know what that means, but Victoria, by the grace of God, Queen of the United Kingdom, okay, so Queen Victoria, and obviously I'm having a little difficulty reading it, your good friend, Victoria, is that from Queen Victoria? In the year of our Lord, 1837, uh, okay, um... Uh, all right, I'm interested. I'm hooked. So let us see. We've got the transcript and whatnot right there. Will that work? I got to get another one of those, like, kind of book. I need to get another one of those book, those book stands. I have one, but it is currently in use. Well, here we go. We have, okay, the letter from Queen Victoria to President, Mar President Martin Van Buren. Upon the death of King William IV, June 23rd, 1837. This is, okay, so this is what we've got here. So we'll read this briefly. Victoria, by the grace of God, Queen of the United Kingdom and of Great Britain and Ireland, Defender of the Faith, to the President of the United States of America, sendeth greeting. Our good friend, it is with the deepest affliction that we announce to you the decease of our most honored and beloved uncle, His Late Majesty King William the Fourth, of blessed memory, whom it please whom it please God to call from this world, on the morning of twentieth of the twentieth instant at twelve minutes past two o'clock in the seventy second year of his age. That is a very articulate way of describing it, and the seventh of his in the seventh of his reign. Uh, while we thus communicate to you the earliest intelligence of this mournful event, we feel convinced that you will participate in our own and public grief for the loss of a sovereign whose memory is justly dear to his family. Uh, well, I don't know about that 100%. And to his subjects of every class, you know, I zoomed in on the date because we all know what happened not, uh, you know... <laughs> not that much longer before, 60, 60 70 years before, prior. Uh, but at that do, his family, his subjects of every class, in acquainting you at the same time with our, access our accession to the throne of this kingdom, we cannot omit to assure you that it will be in our most, it will be our most since earnest desire to cultivate and maintain the relations of friendship and good understanding which so happily subsists between the two countries. You, they say that now. Um, and that it will always afford us pleasure to have fresh opportunities of proving the interest which we take in the welfare and prosperity of the United States. And so we recommend you to the protection of the Almighty, given at our court at Kensington the 23rd day of June in the year of our Lord, 1837, and in the first year of our reign, your good friend, Victoria R., what is the R? Because I noticed the R. Now I, I'm curious. But now we get into the nuts and bolts of it. Oh, a flowchart. Who doesn't love a flowchart? Settle in, everybody, because it's time for some history. The letter from Queen Victoria to President Martin Van Buren upon the death of King William IV. Yada, yada. We did that before. Enclosed, the enclosed letter was sent from Queen Victoria upon her ascension to the throne after the death of her uncle, Queen, King William IV. Pardon me. Queen Victoria was just 18 years old when she assumed the throne of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, and she reigned for 63 years and seven months until her death in 1901. That's right, Queen Victoria was there forever. Her reign was longer than any previous pres British monarch and is called the Victorian era, right? Uh, this letter was sent to the United States 8th President Martin Van Buren, who had just assumed office, who had assumed office just three months prior. In contrast to Victoria's lengthy reign, her uncle King William IV only reigned, had only reigned had reigned only seven years. I'm sorry, I'm reading something that's not there. From 1830 to 1837, after inheriting the throne from his brother George IV, when William was 64 years old, when his brother George IV died, George's only legitimate child, Princess Charlotte, had already died before him in 1817. 
Therefore, the throne went to George's brother, William. Despite having fathered ten illegitimate children with actress Dorothea Jordan... Uh, say what now? Uh, that I didn't know. All right, William. Uh, King William IV had no legitimate children, and the British throne therefore went to his niece, Victoria. And here's the little chart. George the Third. Uh, there's that. There's the children. Uh, Edward. There's Victoria right there. The daughter of Edward. And there's Charlotte and the ten illegitimate children. It makes me wonder, is there... Well, obviously, I think even in the UK up, you know, until recently, that stuff was probably kept buried, so who knows who they were. The cordial tone of Queen Victoria's letter to President Van Buren be conveys her intention to continue the work of her uncle and repair the British-American relationship. This relationship had been left in shambles after the reign of Queen Victoria's grandfather, King George III. Yeah, if you notice that reign date, 1760 to 1820. What could have happened there that uh, would have kind of soured the, at that point, new United States against Great Britain? Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, King William IV, Victoria's uncle and predecessor, had a vastly different philosophy from his father. William IV also believed strongly that Britain should not interfere in the internal affairs of foreign nations. Truth. He also abolished slavery in almost all of the British Empire. Note the almost. The War of 1812 had only ended 25 years before Victoria became queen, and she wanted to ensure relations stayed warm between the two nations. And they stayed relatively warm since then, I would say. <coughs> Pardon me. President Martin Van Buren. President Van Buren was well acquainted with Great Britain, having briefly served as the United States Minister to the United Kingdom for a few months from 1831 to 1832 under President Andrew Jackson. The position of Minister of the United Kingdom is akin to today's ambassador, I was wondering, and is considered one of the most prestigious foreign positions in American politics. Even before his time as Minister to the UK while serving as Secretary of State, Van Buren had already, exper already had experience negotiating with the British. He had reached an agreement to open trade with the British West, uh, the British West Indies, but failed to reach a compromise with the British on the border dispute between U.S.-controlled Maine and British-controlled New Brunswick. Shout out Canada. Uh, in August 1831, President Jackson gave, gave then-Secretary of State Van Buren a recess appointment to fill the role as Minister to Great Britain. Article 2, Section 2, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution reads, quote, The President shall have the power to fill up vac all vacancies that may happen during the recess of the Senate, by granting commissions which shall expire at the end of their next session, end quote. Oh, uh, interesting. Normally, a consent of the Senate is needed to confirm a foreign minister appointment by a president. However, a recess appointment is an alternative method of appointing officials to maintain continuity of administration when the Senate is not in session. See, that's interesting. I actually did not know that. President Jackson gave Martin Van Buren the recess appointment as minister to the UK in August 1831. Van Buren arrived in London in September, but in February of 1832, he learned that the Senate had not confirmed his appointment. Why had Van Buren lost his position so quickly in only the span of six, in the, the span, I guess it would, should be of six months? Uh, Vice President John C. Calhoun wanted to end Van Buren's political career to eliminate competition within the Democratic Party. Calhoun championed the case against Van Buren's appointment as Minister to the United Kingdom, a scheme that was turned on its head and instead put Van Buren in the spotlight. Van Buren overcame his failed nomination as Minister to Great Britain and instead won the, Democrat, the Democratic Party's vice presidential nomination for the 1832 election. Missouri Senator Thomas Hart Benton stated that Vice President Calhoun had, quote, elected a vice president, end quote, with his petty behavior. Jackson and Van Buren then went on to win the 1832 election. During the 1930s, I, I'm going to also assume 1836, come on you guys, come on you guys, proofread, President Jackson helped President Van Buren, Vice President Van Buren win the Democratic Party nomination for presidency and, for presidency and ultimately the presidency. The Resolute Desk. Decades after her letter to Martin Van Buren, President Martin Van Buren, in 1880, Queen Victoria sent a surprise gift to the White House for President Rutherford B. Hayes, a desk. 
The 1,300-pound, elaborately carved, six-foot-wide by two-and-three-quarter-foot-high oak desk is called the Resolute Desk, since it was made from the recycled timbers of the British ship HMS Resolute. The, again, more things I did not know. Its crew abandoned the ship in 1854 in the Arctic after becoming stuck in the ice. Uh, the next year, an American whaling ship found the HMS Resolute, had it refitted in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, and sent it back to England as a symbol of friendship. Well, there you go. When the ship retired in the 1870s and was going to be destroyed, Queen Victoria recycled the timber into a gift for the U.S. president as a further symbol of friendship between the two countries. Every president from Hayes through Eisenhower used the desk. Uh, president Kennedy first placed the desk in the Oval Office in 1961. Then, after being on exhibit for 10 years in the Smithsonian, at the Smithsonian, President Carter returned the desk to the White House, and every president since Carter had used the desk most in the Oval Office. So that would be the desk that you would see in all the shots of the Oval Office, that absolutely beautiful-looking desk. That is, oh, inter that is interesting. Queen Victoria reigned through seven ter the terms of 17 U.S. presidents. When Queen Victoria died on January 22, 1901, the U.S. president was William McKinley, who had not even been born yet when she took the throne. On September 9, 2015, Queen Elizabeth II pa surpassed Queen Victoria's longevity on the throne, which totaled 63 years and 216 days. The second, okay, transfer of power... There is the website if you would like to take a look. The Resolute Desk. Well, I think I know what's probably at least partially going to be in the thumbnail of this. So I did not... I, I mean, that desk is kind of iconic. It's, it's in pretty much everything that's shot in the Oval Office. Every picture you ever see in the Oval Office, that desk is there. I had no clue that it came from the HMS Resolute. That is really, really fascinating. And on top of that, it, it's just such odd timing. You, you know, the, the her grand, you know, King Edward really soured everything. Obviously, there was kind of a war over it, and then it changed into what it is now. And I would say, I think not many people could argue that uh, politically, you know, the UK and the US have a pretty diplomatic and, um, you know, I would say cordial relationship. That is fascinating. I, again, that's the best part of this. I So much stuff I didn't know. I also knew Queen Victoria reigned for a very long time, did not realize it was that long, and also did not realize it encompassed 17 presidencies. That is an awful lot. And again, but that's because growing up in the United States, <coughs> we don't have a monarch, so we're not used to these very, very long reigning you know, figureheads, you know, the, the most we ever had in, obviously, American history was uh, Franklin Roosevelt during World War II with the, the four terms, but since then, it's been, the maximum has been two terms per president, so we're just not used to anything over eight years. But that said, love me some history by mail. It, I love this set, and I was kind of wondering when I saw last week, or last month, I should say, Transfer of power. So I was thinking, okay, it's going to be, you know, leaders transferring power, passing power over, resigning, whatnot. Wasn't sure where it was going to go. And this was very fascinating because, quite honestly, other than a few things, um, I don't know a whole lot about uh, about Queen Victoria. Obviously, you've heard, you hear about the, the Victorian age and this and that, but... That's why we love this stuff, because it just makes you... It, it's actually going to make me... When I'm finished filming this in probably about 25 seconds, uh, I'm going over to the computer and I'm going to do some research. So anyways, I'm going to go do that. Hopefully you all enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Um, don't really know what much else to say. Nothing housekeeping-wise going on. Oh, actually, uh, I meant to mention it on Thursday. Down below, there's another Discord link. Um, uh, we all know Dan... Uh, DM cards now. Hockey Stick Talk Nation is his channel name. He started the Discord server to uh, help bring people together and honestly teach people about hockey. And you know, a lot. I'm one of them. I know a little bit about hockey, but I am a lapsed hockey fan because the Penguins are causing me uh, essentially nothing but stress. And I already have that with the Steelers, which is why I completely gave up on the Pirates. But anyway, that is going to do it for History by Mail this Sunday. Hopefully, you have a great rest of your weekend. 
and we will see you next time, everyone.